Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about equilibrium constants. Um, equilibrium constants are basically a mathematical way of expressing where uh, the position of an equilibrium system lies. Okay, and so hopefully by the end of this film, you'll know what an equilibrium constant expression looks like, and you'll know how to write one if you're given a, uh, the equation for a reaction. And also you'll have had to think about what sort of factors will um, cause an equilibrium constant to change. And judging by its name, equilibrium constant, you might be thinking, well, probably not very many things, and, and you'd be quite right about that. But anyway, let's have a look at what an equilibrium constant looks like. Okay, this here in orange is an equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so if you're asked to write an equilibrium constant expression, it will start with capital K for equilibrium constant, and then we'll be expressing this equilibrium constant in terms of the concentrations, okay, of the substances in the equation. Okay, how do we know this here? Well, because it's Kc, but you won't always see this C in tests and exams, okay, because waste only deals with equilibrium constants in terms of concentrations. You can express them in terms of partial pressures, in which case it's Kp, but we don't need to worry about that too much. So your equilibrium constant will always look something like this, okay, it will always have the concentrations of things in it, okay, so the substance in square brackets reads as the concentration of that substance, in moles per dm cubed, so this one here is the concentration of C in moles per dm cubed, okay? And as you can see here, the equilibrium constant is a fraction, or in other words, a ratio, okay? And it's a ratio of the products on the top divided by the reactants on the bottom, okay? So um, the bigger Kc is, or the bigger the equilibrium constant is, the more products there will be compared to the reactants. So in other words, the position of equilibrium will lie to the right. There'll be lots of products, not very many reactants. If you've got a small equilibrium constant, well, the opposite will apply. You'll have lots of reactants present at equilibrium and not very many products. Okay, so in other words, the yield will be small. There won't be very much of these things. Um, what else is there to say about this? Well, what you can see here is that as well as having products on top and reactants on the bottom, these things are multiplied together in each part of the fraction, okay? And they're also raised to certain powers, okay? So the concentration of C is raised to the power little c, which corresponds to the stoichiometric coefficient of C in the equation. So if we think of these little or the lowercase letters as being the moles of each substance in the equation, or the stoichiometric coefficients, then we'll raise the concentrations to the powers of these numbers. Okay, so if we had two moles of A in this equation, then the concentration of A would be squared, and so on. There's one other really important thing to realize about equilibrium constant expressions, and that is that because they measure concentrations, they'll only deal with substances that are either in solution or are gases. So in other words, things that we can measure the number of moles per litre of, okay, or the number of moles per dm cubed, which is just another word for litre. Okay, so anything that's liquid or solid, whose con any pure liquid or solid, whose concentration effectively doesn't change, you'll always have the same number of moles per litre of that substance. Those substances won't appear in an equilibrium constant expression. That's really, really important, okay? Because when you're asked to write these equilibrium constant expressions, you have to remember not to include anything that's solid or liquid. And we'll see some examples in just a moment, okay? It's also important to realize that you don't ever have to do the maths here, really, okay? So you won't be asked to do calculations using these expressions. You'll just be asked to write the expressions. So um, I think the best thing to do would be to just have a look at a few examples of these things for a few different systems. Okay, we'll start with this system up here, okay, where nitrogen and hydrogen are turning into ammonia, okay. All the things in this, equili in this equilibrium are gases, so they're all going to appear in the equilibrium constant expression. Kc is given as the concentration of ammonia, because it's a product on top, divided by the product of, so these things multiplied together, nitrogen times hydrogen, but we've had to square the ammonia because there was two moles of it in the equation, and we've had to cube 
the hydrogen because there's three moles of that. Okay. Moving on to this one here, where we've got, again, two reactants and two products, different mole ratio this time. In fact, there's one mole of everything, so there's no powers seen in this equilibrium constant expression because all the powers are one. Okay. This time, not all the substances are gases or aqueous. In fact, we've got a solid here, so the carbon is a solid. Okay. So the carbon won't appear in the equilibrium constant expression, which is why we don't see it at the bottom of the fraction. We've just got the water here as a gas. Water won't normally appear because it will normally be a liquid, but here it's a gas. So we do put it in. Okay, and we multiply the products, the concentration of the products together on the top and divide by the reactants, but in this case not including carbon because it's a solid. Okay, moving on to this equilibrium system here where most of the things, well not most in fact, half of them, no gases, but um, we've got two substances that are dissolved, they're AQ, so we can measure the concentration of these, but the concentration of the two solids will be constant, okay? So in other words, their concentrations can't change, so we won't put them into our equilibrium constant expression. And so K, the equilibrium constant, is given as the product, okay? Raised to the power 1, because there's one mole of it, divided by the reactant, which is silver plus, squared, because we've got two of them, okay? We've got the square brackets in here to indicate that we're measuring the concentrations of these substances. Okay, and finally, we'll just look at this equilibrium system here where calcium carbonate is being thermally decomposed. We're heating it up and it turns into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. In this case, the equilibrium constant is, expression is very simple because there's only one AQ or gas here. So we can only measure the concentration of one of them, that's the CO2. It's raised to the power 1 because there's one mole of it. And so the equilibrium constant is simply CO2. If, I suppose, if this reaction was written the other way round, so if we were looking at CO2 turning into, so if we just simply wrote it this way round, turning in, oops, CA, CAO plus CO2 turning into CA, CO3, then because this is now a reactant, it goes on the bottom. So KC would be equal to 1 over the concentration of CO2. Okay? So it is important to realize that Kc depends on the way that the reversible reaction is written. Okay, You'll invert Kc if you write the reaction the other way around. Okay? And just because things disappear, it doesn't mean they're removed, I suppose, from the expression altogether. So this would be CO2 over 1, and when we invert it, we put 1 on there. So things that vanish, like this carbon here, become ones rather than becoming zeros, I suppose you could say.